Here we are in 1901 in Murdoch Mysteries land, and we, the cast of Murdoch Mysteries, has boarded a cruise liner on the Great Lakes. the boat and that sort of formed the, the kernel of the idea as to whether we could do something on the boat. We've got a bit of a track record of doing something above and beyond, being able to get a turn of the century uh, steamship that's representative of the period. Seems like, you know, too good an idea not to, not to jump on as a premier episode. The ship is also the oldest surviving Edwardian steamship in the world. There were about 3,800 steamships built between 1900 and 1920, uh, including the Titanic and the Lusitania and the Mauritania and all those names that people know from years past. They're all gone. This is the only one left anywhere in the world. She's also the only one left in working condition on the Great Lakes. I mean, the town was created, it was Little Chicago is how it started. Um, and it was the hub, it was, this was the place to be and of course, when the steamship stopped, the train stopped, the elevator stopped, the town kind of died out. So having this come back and at such a scale, it's just a bonus to, to the community. Kewatin was built in 1907 in Govan, Scotland. Titanic was built in 1912 in Belfast, Northern Ireland. They were both part of British shipbuilding, which in those days was the massive shipbuilding for the world. Though there's a lot of commonality in the way the wooden carved chairs in the dining room, the stained glass window, the carved walls in the bar room, the opulence in the major lounges in the public areas. So, although we are one-tenth the size of Titanic, very similar in everything, except the fact that the ship sailed for 60 years and never lost a passenger and never, <laughs> never missed a trip, and Titanic didn't finish her first trip. We like to think of her as a, as a younger, unfortunate sister. Kiwatin and her sister were built to a better standard than the three previous ships that were built in Scotland. And she had what was called an all first class service. And what that meant was they all ate in the same dining room, they all used the same public rooms, but there were three very distinct types of rooms you could have. There was a standard berth, which is like a railway car, there was the, a step up from that, which on the promenade deck were called deck side or promenade rooms. And then we had things called deluxe rooms. Away for almost 50 years, the SS Key Warden is home, at last. Nobody in the crowd is more excited than Gil Blutrich, the Israeli-born developer who flew in the face of common sense to repatriate this priceless piece of Canada's heritage. How do you feel? Amazing, amazing. So exciting. My role in episode 701 was to create the impossible with the ship that the characters sail on. In this case, we enhanced a number of shots to make the Kiwatin appear to be in Toronto Harbor and heading out onto Lake Ontario. And we built a CG version of the Kiwatin so that we could animate it to do what we needed to do for the sake of the episode. We began with the actual ship, the Kiwatin, docked at Port McNichol. We took hundreds of photos of the ship from all kinds of angles. We used those both as reference for construction of a CG version of the boat, and we actually used the photos as surface detail, surface texture. That gave us a CG model that we can use within the episode. We then took shots we did on Lake Ontario from another vessel. We CG Kiwaden into those shots and rendered and finished the shots. Also, specifically, the sinking of the Kiwaden was a major aspect of this show, and we were able to use our model to animate and present the ship sinking. We did a few shots as well that were shot in Port McNichol of the real ship. The port as it exists there is uh, certainly not quite like what we picture turn of the century Toronto to be, but we were, we were able to create matte paintings that simulate uh, turn of the century Toronto. 
Making it look real is, is always the biggest challenge in visual effects. Always down to the last few kicks at the can, you know, applying small fine details that uh, sell it as real. I think it's a great opportunity for us to be able to capture a little moment in Canadian history being on this boat and having it available to us. And just the fact that it's here is, is, is a miracle. I think it makes a great launch for season seven.